we're going to start our exploration of flow with one of the simplest things imaginable. We're going to use a flow to send an email. And that's all it's going to do. You'll find flow in the setup menu, and you can simply get to it by searching for it or by looking for the process automation section. When I go to the setup page, I can start, I can see all of my existing flows, and I'm going to start a new flow. If this doesn't look familiar, it's because it's the new flow builder available starting in Spring 19. Now all we want to do for our first exploration of flow is send an email. It's the easiest possible thing. I'm going to take a core action element, drag it out onto my screen, and search for send email. This is the send email quick action. When you add an element, which is what we're doing right now, to the flow canvas, you need to give it a name. So we're just going to call this send an email to myself. All right. And you can see that it auto-generated an API name that meets the restrictions and requirements of API names. I can give it a description. This is from Lesson 1A, Flow Tutorial. That's really just for the use of me and for anyone who comes after and is trying to maintain this. And now let's move down to here. And you can see that we've got the ability to set input values and store output values. That's a very fundamental concept to flow. In flow, information is flowing from the left to the right, from upstream to downstream, from input to output. So every element basically has the potential ability to have inputs passed into it and then process them and then pass out some output values. And this is one of the most powerful things about flow, this ability to plug different steps into the overall process. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a body. Now when I clicked on this, you can see a menu popped up. What the menu is showing are what flow calls resources. Resources uh, are pieces of information that you can create. Some are automatically created. Some allow you to create a placeholder that will get filled in when the flow runs. Because remember, we're not running the flow right now. We're designing it. And it's very important to keep that fact clear that we're in design mode right now. Later on, the flow is going to get run, probably by other people, although maybe just by us. Now, as you can see, I can search for my res through my resources, or I can just enter a value. And so I'm going to keep it simple right now, and I'm just going to enter a value. This is the body of the email. Same thing here. You can see that these are required, which makes sense. Uh, if you're sending an email, you really want to have something in the body and subject. All right, and then basically those fields were here because they were required. All of these other things down here, these are other optional inputs that you can pass in. So for example, if we want to, we can add a sender address. Uh, and what about, and, the, so, and then the next thing is the email address that we're sending it to, which is a little strange if you think about it. There's nothing more required in an email message than the address of who you're sending it to. But in this case, this particular action provides two different ways, a comma separated list or a collection. And later on, we'll talk about what a collection is. So there, you, you have to do one or the other. They're not both required. And so they're, they show up here as a optional. So what I'm going to do here, so I'm going to use uh, uh, a test account I've set up, Alex Salesforce demo at gmail.com. And so we're done. We're ready to go. So what we've done here is we have added an element to the canvas and we have configured it. Notice that we haven't connected it though. Flow doesn't assume connections. 
uh, it wants to give you the freedom to make the connections yourself but you've got to remember to do that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my start element and I'm going to connect it to my new send an email quick action so now we've got a flow it's going to start here it's going to execute this and let's save it now similar thing here we have to name this so let's call this lesson 1a send email this is for the flow tutorial now here we have this type field you can see that it's required uh, which means we have to select something here and if you click on it you'll see that there are some pretty odd characters here uh, user provisioning flow is uh, a something that sounds odd very useful but only for people that are involved in user provisioning um, very powerful but but not something we're going to work, work up, worry about right now orchestration flows are used for IOT field service snap and flows that's only relevant if you're doing a field service for our purposes right now we actually want an auto launched flow an auto launched flow is basically a flow that doesn't have any screens is not waiting for any user input it's just going to execute and carry out its assignment immediately so we're going to do that and we're going to save it all right now we've got uh, some warnings here it's warning that uh, send an email isn't connected to anything uh, not a big problem this these as it says here just a heads up are not anything that we have to really worry about so we have this flow notice that it's in inactive state we are still able to run it and debug it though so let's run it and you can see that basically it ran it said it's finished let's go take a look over at our inbox and here is the email here's the body and here is the subject line so we have successfully completed our very first simplest flow uh, and that's all it takes to create some some automation now I'm gonna go back here and let's take a look I'm gonna click twice here to to so that we're looking at the most recent flows so you can see here we've got we've got it right here note that it isn't active um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to activate it there's a lot of things that we're not going to get into in this early lesson that don't work properly if you haven't activated a flow it won't show up in certain lists certain places you might want to choose it um, and so let's uh, let's uh, let's activate it I'm going to activate it by clicking on it and then clicking on the activate button and that's the end of our first lesson. Here are some additional resources where you can learn a lot about Flow, the other tutorials, some of our official data, and the link to the unofficial Flow community site.